Hey everyone, so welcome back. Uh, another webinar um, here that discusses Simulia Works. My name is Omar Zoni. Um, again, my colleague and I, Sashi, have been working um, on a handful of uh, webinars that we hope will highlight some of the capabilities available inside Simulia Works. Again, just to, to kind of give a little bit of a background, Simulia Works is the joint collaboration between SolidWorks, the SolidWorks brand at Dassault, and the Simulia Works brand at Dassault, and the Simulia brand, or the Simulia brand at Dassault, sorry. And the Simulia brand is the brand that's responsible for all of the simulation capabilities. So Simulia Works right now is really a, just um, kind of the Abacus tool. So some of the, it's using the Abacus solver with a, um, you know, a really nice front end uh, in the 3D experience platform. And today, I'm gonna be talking about the Material Calibration app. So, um, Let's go ahead and, and get into the app and discuss exactly why, um, where it's useful um, and, and the power behind it. Now the Material Calibration app is an app that's available inside of Structural Mechanics Engineer, um, which is the, the product that gives you explicit dynamics. We'll be doing a, um, my, my colleague Sashi will be doing a uh, presentation that, that shows some of the capabilities available with the Dynamic Solver. But in addition to the dynamic solver, another really nice feature that you get with Structural Mechanics Engineer is the ability to do material calibration. Now, what exactly is material calibration? Well, material calibration basically gives you the opportunity to take measured test data. So stress, typically it's stress strain data, um, you know, maybe measured in some, uh, uh, some different ways if you're doing hyperelastic materials, but um, you can take that test data and then fit it to one of the material models that are available inside uh, Simulia works on the platform. So, um, you know, typically the material models are going to be, you know, linear elastic, elastic plastic, hyper elastic, visco elastic. There's also a really nice hyper foam model. There's a visco plastic model, but um, I would say for the most part, particularly customers that are coming from the the, the solid works world um, into Simulia works are going to probably be in the elastic plastic, hyper elastic, maybe foam, maybe visco elastic range. Now, you know, what are some of the challenges typically for using some of these advanced material models? Well, first of all, um, you know, if the calibration tool is too difficult, you're probably not going to use it, right? So, um, you know, if it's very manual, requires a lot of expertise, um, you're not going to use it. Now, the downside is that if, of that is that without proper calibration, the material model that um, you then go ahead and use is not going to fit your data very well. Um, so the, this material calibration app really unlocks the door to allow you to be able um, to, to really accurately model your material characteristics. Okay, so here I am in the material calibration app. Now the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rename this to give uh, the material uh, the material name a little, to make it a little bit more um, meaningful, right? I'm not gonna let it just be physics simulation, whatever. I'm just gonna call this, um, so I'll just call it Webinar MC for material calibration. So what are the steps to do this? Well, the steps are pretty straightforward. First of all, we're going to import a material model, right? So I'm just going to say, go ahead and let's import a material model. Now I have some predefined test data here. I am just going to read in um, the a material model for a very, very simple um, elastic plastic uh, uh, three, an A356 material. Uh, and right here it is. So it's a simple text file that uh, gives us our stress strain curve basically. Now there are a couple steps that we're going to do. So this is reading the, the text data directly. I'm gonna first say that look, I don't want you to start the import at row one. I want you to start it at row two. Um, and we can see the uh, material test data that gets imported. So um, let's see, a couple things. I mean, for this guy, we really don't need to do much uh, correction. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say finish. You can see it's about 475 rows. Um, so there's my uniaxial test data. So I'm gonna go ahead and just see that my stress is in the correct unit. Now, if it weren't in the correct unit, I would have to go back and, and, and change the unit system, but it appears that uh, we're okay. So 
Now, because I don't really need to make any changes to the, the actual curve, I can just go ahead and say, look, I want to select the appropriate material model for this. Now, uh, in this case, I am going to use an elastic plastic material model. And, um, you know, I'm not going to have any rate dependent uh, material properties. So I'm just going to say elastic plastic and I'll go ahead and say, OK. Uh, and then it's going to ask me, you know, which material model do I want to use? So um, isotropic Johnson Cook is probably the most common um, for this particular model. Um, and you can see that the, the, based on the A, B, and N materials or uh, material constants that it's kind of just guessing at, uh, this is the, the response curve. Now, obviously, that response curve is not accurate, right? So we're going to have to do some calibration in order to, um, to, to capture the, the correct response, right? So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off. Uh, I don't want it to really uh, iterate on the... Um, modulus of elasticity. I'm pretty confident that that's accurate. What I do want it to iterate on is the ABC constants, or the, I'm sorry, the ABN constants um, that kind of define the material property. So I am now just going to come up here to execute. I could, um, there, there is some ability to change kind of the way it does its uh, iteration and the way it converges and what it considers a uh, converged solution. I'm just going to leave it at the defaults. I found that leaving it at the defaults is um, adequate for most of the material models. So it's gonna go ahead, it's gonna convert. You'll see it uh, change our A, B, and N variables as it does that. And eventually it finishes and it's, uh, you now we can see that the uh, test data lies right on top of our our response lies right on top of our test data. So um, a pretty simple example um, to capture uh, the response. So I'm just going to close this here. We can see what our A, B, and N values are. And now if I wanted to, I could just go ahead and save this material model um, using the save right here. So if I go ahead and save it, now I've got access to that material model, whatever it was called, uh, Webinar MC. So that's how you would do it for a, a very, very simple elastic plastic model where the, the curve is uh, pretty well defined. So now let's take a look at another example. So this is um, an SAE 1018, a low carbon steel uh, material model with some test data. Now there are a couple issues with the data in this case. I wanted to show you guys an example with uh, some situations where you might have to correct the data that you get. So for this particular model, um, there are a couple things. First, there's a, a couple points that uh, appear really close together that don't look realistic, so we're going to get rid of them. Um, we're going to get rid of the, the, the test data after the ultimate tensile stress because there's some necking that's going to occur. We're also going to do um, a, a zero offset. There's a little bit of slack at the beginning of the, um, of the uh, characterization or the, the, the capture of this data. So um, we're going to account for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight the first two columns so that the software knows which data I would like for it to import. Um, there you guys can see it. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say finish. It's uniaxial test data. Um, we're in megapascals, which we expect. Um, and you can see some of the data that's real. Here's a point that's really close together. And then we're going to do a zero shift uh, to, to, to account for some of this slack that, that's in the model. So um, we also know that for this particular model, we know our Young's modulus is going to be about 205 gigapascals. We know the Poisson's ratio is 0.33. So um, we've gone ahead, imported the model. If we want to, um, you know, we can change the way this appears. So instead of having it be red, if I come here to my settings, you can see I can change the, the name of it. I can also change the color. So let's say that I want this to appear in black. And if I did want a line, I could say, hey, look, uh, put a solid line on there up to you. Um, also dashed lines, dotted lines. So you can fully customize the way you want your test data to look. All right, so I've got my test data selected. Now, the first thing that I want to do is I want to do my zero shift, right? So um, what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to double click on my uniaxial data, which activates, uh, puts me in a mode where I can actually do, um, make some modifications to it. So then I'm going to uh, say like, uh, in, in this case, I'm gonna zoom in. Uh, well, let me just zoom in on anything under about 300 megapascals. I'm gonna tell the software that I wanna do um, a, a zero shift here. And then I'll go ahead and pick the data that I um, want to modify. So it's basically right around here where we've got that slack. I'm just gonna grab those four points uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that I want to evaluate. All right, so that's what our new curve will look like. And I'll just say, okay, so here is my new curve, zero shifted to uh, um, account for that slack. Now, the other thing you can see up here, I've got two points that are right on top of each other. So what um, I'm going to do is go ahead and remove one of those points. So I think think it's right around here. Yeah, we can see the two points that are right on top of each other. I'm just going to highlight that one, remove that selection. Um, I could smooth the curve a little bit if I wanted to, but not a, not a big deal. And then I'm also going to get rid of any points above the 0.19 stress or strain. So uh, anything above there, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this data because it's above the ultimate stress. And there you go. There we've got um, the curve that now I want to fit. So again, uh, I'm going to say OK here. There's my data curve. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the appropriate uh, material model here. So in this case, again, uh, and I, I, I could name it here. So let's call it SAE uh, 1018. And C for material calibration. I will use linear elastic. Again, I'm going to use the elastic plastic. Um, and that should be all I need to do. So I click OK. Now it's going to show me my material model. You can see um, for the values that, um, well, well let, let's make some modifications here. So first of all, we know that we don't really want to be um, running any um, calibration on the Young's modulus or the Poisson's racer. So I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to uh, put in the appropriate Young's modulus. So we said it was 205 gigapascals. So, uh, and we know that we want our Young's modulus to be around 0.3. I could play with um, some of this stuff, the way that it, it uh, calibrates, um, the, you know, the error measure setting that it uses and the optimization setting. I'm gonna leave them as defined. I don't think it's as important um, to start playing with that stuff unless you start getting uh, you know, some results that don't make sense. And I'm gonna go ahead and say execute. And again, when I do that, it's going to iterate on the A, B, and N uh, values. And hopefully it will give us a curve that fits the test data. All right, so there you go. Again, we can see what our A, B, and N values are. We can see the response curve really, really closely mimics uh, the, 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 the data as input. So again, I can go ahead, save that data out, and now I've got another material model that meets the criteria for the, the test data. Or I'm sorry, the, the, the material model that accurately um, corresponds to, to the data that um, we recorded. So now the last example that I want to show you guys is an example where we got hyperelastic data. Now, hyperelastic test data, this one came from a, a company that um, has allowed us to share it, a company called Axel. Um, and the test data actually has, um, so tension, uh, biaxial, planar, and volumetric test data. So we've got four sets of test data that we want to fit to one of our hyperelastic curves. So again, first step, I'm just going to import the data. which is right here. And we can see we've got the uniaxial, biaxial, planar, and then down here, where's our, well, oh, and here's our volumetric test data. So um, let's go ahead and start importing the appropriate curves, right? So we'll start with uniaxial. Um, that's the, the first one to find up here. And I'm just gonna, again, I'm we'll just highlight the A and B columns and go ahead and um, import that data. 
and let's just to make sure that our unit system is correct yes we are we want the nominal uniaxial stress to be in megapascals we've got our our strain data defined um, so that seems right i'm just going to go ahead and ask it to import the data perfect so now we've got our uniaxial test data now i'm going to move on to biaxial and i will select the appropriate curves do the same thing biaxial test data units are megapascals um, for stress obviously the strain so we've got our biaxial test data now i'm going to go ahead and define our planar perfect and finally volumetric so i'm going to go ahead and say that i want to import the volumetric test data and we, we, we're going to need to make sure here now that the columns are accurately defined so column one will be the volume ratio and then column two will be the pressure in megapascals and yeah that looks correct to me so perfect so now we'll just go ahead we'll um ask it to import that data and we can finish so yeah there, there we've got our biax our uniaxial uh biaxial and planar and then we've got our volumetric test data so in this case you know we've got our um our test data Im imported now we just need to, to select the appropriate material model so in this case we're going to use a hyperelastic so i'm going to change the name here to hyper material calibration and we will use the hyperelastic material formulation now we don't have the unloading data so we can include the mullins effect we just have the load data um, so uh, you know if we did have the unloading characteristics we could include that in this case we don't um, so yeah we're just going to use hyperelastic without the mullins effect so here we've got our test data and here we've got the um, assumed uh, response based on the the calibration so obviously we haven't done any calibration it's kind of just an initial guess uh, we can specify the material model that we want to use do we want to use you know Ogden Mooney Rivlin um, you know it really just depends on uh, what material data that you have and which uh, material you know I would suggest you guys read a little bit about where these particular models work in all honesty if you've got this much data there'll probably be a few that work pretty well so what I'm going to do is I am going to use the Yao model I will leave all of those characteristics on I actually wanted to use all of the the test data if you wanted to you know you could turn some of these off and say hey look I just want you to fit to the uniaxial the biaxial etc honestly in uh, in the case where you've got all this data I would argue that you probably want to use all of them and fit the curve that best fits um, uh, that best fits you know all of the data that's available right so let's go ahead and execute and see what our how accurately we can mimic or follow the curve and you can see pretty quickly we get um, some response data so again if this is what if you don't feel like this is a good approach um, or maybe you can see that the the biax well they actually are all pretty close so but let's let's just for the sake of it let's say that we want to use a Mooney Rivland approximation and then we can go ahead and execute there and perhaps you feel like this is a, a, a better um, approximation of your test data so it's kind of up to you to figure out exactly which um, First of all how accurately you want things to, to, to fit the curve data how many iterations you want so you can kind of control that here in the optimization so um, you know if I wanted more more iterations if I wanted the cur the uh, the tolerance to be a little bit tighter I could control all of that data but again I mean uh, we can also use polynomials um, you know if we wanted to use a high order polynomial perhaps to fit the curve we could do that 
you can see that is not really fitting our volumetric test data very well at all. So I'd argue that that's probably not a good fit. So, I mean, the bottom line here is that you've got access to a lot of different hyperelastic material models. Ogden is also a very popular one. Um, we can use like a second or third order Ogden, which, um, you know, adds uh, quite a bit of um, accuracy to the model. And actually, I would argue that the Ogden looks like it fits it pretty well. Um, so maybe you want to use that one. So again, once you've got it, uh, the, the, the appropriate model fit you just go ahead and save the data. So, um, you know, there are some other more advanced material models that you, that you can fit. I would argue that, it, you know, if you're getting more complicated than kind of um, elastic plastic or hyperelastic, maybe viscoelastic and, and hyper, and if you've got foam, maybe hyperfoam, that um, there might be an opportunity for you to reach out and work with one of the technical um, uh, resources at your reseller or reach out directly to SolidWorks. But really, really powerful tool here, the Material Calibration app, and I hope you guys um, you know, we're able to, to, to um, see some of the power that's available inside of the Simulia Works. This really, really neat app on the 3D Experience platform available with Simulia Works. So I hope that those three examples give you um, a little bit of background about what is exactly capable using the, um, you know, the, the Simulia Works tool and the, the material calibration app. Again, uh, Sashi and I are doing a, a series of webinars. If you're interested in some more data, you can also go to the, the website listed here, solidworks.com slash um, are there, there are a lot of videos and some, uh, some resources that will uh, allow you to figure out exactly what's behind some of these SimuliaWorks tools. In addition to that, um, if you have um, if you, you you have access to my SolidWorks, there's also some um, videos that are available there. So uh, you can see my smiling face in one of the videos. Uh, uh, on the bottom right there, but there's a, a, a lot of capabilities there that kind of give a, a, an overview of some of the capabilities and show some examples of where they're useful. If you guys want, uh, and here are some actual uh, examples of the, the tool being used. So I believe all these are using Structural Mechanics Engineer. They all look like explicit examples. Drop test there at the top right. Um, a can crushing. It looks like an impact test bottom left. I'm not sure what the top left is. Um, but it does look like it's a dynamic uh, simulation. So I think they're all probably using the explicit solver available in Structural Mechanics Engineer. Um, if you have some questions about the webinar or anything uh, else that I can help with, please, guys, feel free to reach out to me. Here's my email address. I'll leave it up here for a couple seconds. I know this is a weird time, um, you know, and where we're doing our best to, to try to stay engaged with you guys. But anything that we can help you with, um, you know, feel free to, to reach out. If I don't know the answer, which uh, is quite likely. I will uh, refer you to the appropriate person uh, and we can go from there. But thanks for taking a little bit of time. Again, this is going to be a four or five part series um, on advanced simulation techniques or capabilities using Simulia work. So uh, stay tuned for what's next. Uh, the, the, or if you haven't looked at the, the, the previous ones, take a look at um, some of the Simulia works capabilities in, in, in this webinar series. So everybody take care and stay safe. And um, until next time, cheers.